Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundweb Studios is the answer. Soundweb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at soundwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews, and Eve 11 enjoys by Howard's celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manus. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by <laughs> Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms heard in over 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. And now playing on HamiltonRadio.net. Diamonds FM, Oldies Radio, and soon to be coming to a network near you. Take the Mike Wagner Show at the on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, baseball gear, and more. Makes great gifts for your family, friends, and loved ones 24-7. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, Go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and a lot more. Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, themikewidenershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with an amazing gentleman who's an award-winning music publisher, management consultant, and a member of the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame, with the Band of Oz in 2016, he's a 28-year voting member of the Recording Academy in Nashville. He's also an author, speaker, and member of the Macy Style crew. He's also host of the uh, Random Acts podcast. We'll talk about that. He also co-authored the book, The Seven Stupid Mistakes People Make Trying to Get Into the Music Business. He's also a song plug, plugger, and he's also a music extraordinary. He's a force in um, the country music business. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in the beautiful downtown heart of Music City, the amazing war-winning music publisher, management consultant, and member of the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame, and the ultimate song plugger, ladies and gentlemen, the very multi-talented, Chris Keaton. Chris, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Lord have mercy. How can I possibly follow that introduction? I mean, that's like amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I do have to add this. Yes, and I do have another book out right now. It's called Dapper, and it's all about the fashion business and how to be a gentleman in these trying times. Yes, sir. So anyway, Mike, thank you so much for having me on your show. First off, it's an incredible honor. I mean, you're you. I mean, look at all that stuff you've got going on. You've got you're on all these channels. You're about to like. So you'll be the king of all media before we know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure. Well, I, I think you got me speechless on that one. I'll have to uh, fight it out with Howard Stern and uh, try to convince Joe Rogan at the same time. But you know, like, <laughs> I think I'll have to have a little uh, dinner with them or maybe a steak dinner or whatever, or take them to McDonald's and just try to convince them and say, hey, can you all move over a little bit, please? Thank you. So <laughs> I'll take Well, I'll tell you, I mean, if, if, if people will listen to your show, they'll get it and they'll know. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, listen... You, you anyway enough of blowing up your skirt as we say down south <laughs> um, dude i'm just i'm really happy to be on your show and uh, uh again this is like a, a real honor so let's get into it so you ask me a question and then i'll ask you a question how's that you know something? I've worked it that way, and I'm just waiting for your accolades as well, too. And in fact, uh, we talked earlier about chocolate cake and everything and having the icing. I think we could probably do that, except uh, my, my cake came late. I tried to call up, and unfortunately, uh, those uh, Uber Eats uh, just don't always get there in time. So uh, like that. So. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, other than that, you're an award-winning member, music 
award-winning music publisher, management consultant, member of the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame with the Band of Oz of 2016. You're a 28-year voting member of the Recording Academy in Nashville. You're author, speaker, and a member of the Macy Stow crew. You hosted the Random Acts podcast, and you co-authored the book, The Seven Stupid Mistakes People Make Trying to Get in the Music Business, and you're also the ultimate song plugger, and uh, just got word you have a brand new book called Dapper. I mean, you've got a lot in the pipeline. Before we get into all that, Chris, tell us how you first got started. You know what? Mikey, yes, and I'm going to call you Mikey if that's okay, because it's a it's a term of endearment. Okay. Absolutely, so, yeah. It's okay. Like, you can call me anything you want, just don't call me late for dinner. That's one condition. Okay, I, have. I got you. I got you. <laughs> so February 9th, nineteen sixty four, I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, and it changed my life. Uh, my brother and I were sitting in the floor in my grandmother's house in Roanoke, Virginia, and we saw them. She walks past us with a dinner plate and looked at the TV and looked at us and said, they look like a bunch of monkeys. And my brother and I looked at each other and go, yeah, but aren't they cool? And so that started the process. And the truth is my career path was to be a rock star. And in other people's terms, maybe it didn't work out, but in my terms, I live a rock star lifestyle. I get to do what I want to do. I get to hang around creative people. I get to be interviewed by people like you. And it's like marvelous. I mean, it really, really is. It's a, it's a joyful life. And I'm grateful for everything I've had and everything that's coming tomorrow. Because tomorrow is going to be even better than today. You know that, right? Mm, we all do. That's right. It's like, or make uh, tomorrow much better than today. I've heard along those lines. But yes, that's totally great. Yeah. So, you know, life's been good. Um, I have been able to be a connector with a lot of different people. I'm the ultimate middleman. I mean, I have certain talents, but my biggest talent is meeting someone who has a marvelous song or a marvelous talent. And I go, oh my gosh, you got to come over here and meet this guy. And I connect them and I'm able to be in the process that way. And it's a, it's, it's, it's a wonderful place to be. I mean, as I tell my friends every day, every day's a holiday and every meal's a banquet. And then we follow up with chocolate cake, chocolate yes, ganache, yes, just like we yes. were talking about off camera. Yeah, right? <laughs> Oh, you got me hungry on that one. I'll tell you. <laughs> so where is that Uber Eats? Should we call him up again? Because because yeah. I'm ready for that chocolate hot right well, now. Oh, you know something? I, I had the number and I think I lost. I think my phone went blank, to be honest with you. So I think it just blew up with so much. It's like I had the turn off for reasons. It's like it's blowing up on me every time. Come on, I'm doing a show. Wait a minute. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's marvelous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my so, gosh. So anyway, I mean, you know, I do have a delightful time. I get to be around creative people all day long and, and I get all these stories from it. Um, you know, every Friday I put out a newsletter called the Badass of the Week. And I, I just talk about somebody who I've met and how marvelous they are and how they are able to uniquely shine their own light and change the world a little bit every day. Because, you know, and I know that you know this. We're all unique. We all have our own light. And it, our, it is our job and our responsibility to shine that light. And if we do, we have the opportunity to make the world a little brighter every day. Because, you know, I mean, I'm not breaking any, you know, breaking any news here. But, you know, the news every day is not that damn good. I mean, that's like crazy whack stuff. But mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to push the tide the other way. I choose to try to push the tide the other way. You know what? At the end of the day, when I get, sorry, when I get to the gates of heaven, and that's presupposing that I do, but if I do get to the gates of heaven, I hope that, that my scorecard will say, okay, you put out more good than bad. Come on in. Ta-da. Mm, yes. Yes. 
I think we'll have to start keeping scores on that one too. So I think we'll just uh, <laughs> keep that in mind as well too. And of course, um, you've also uh, accomplished as well too. And um, what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the uh, rest of your career? What was that one moment that simply said, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? You know, that's a great question. And I think that the best answer that I have for that is when I discovered that not only the things that I have done in the music business, but also now in the fashion business, is I help people. They tell me their dreams, their goals, their challenges, and I try to come up with something that works for them, whether it's a suit or whether it's um, a set of suits for a groom for a wedding or whether it's a song that will work for an artist to have it cut for somebody or whether it's a songwriter coming to me and they go, what do you think about this idea? And I may share something. Hopefully I will share something with them that, that, that connects them to the greater source that leads them to the right thing to do for the song. Mm -hmm. So I get to help people and it's really pretty marvelous. It really is. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That sounds pretty good. And uh, who are some of your favorite um, country artists, singers, songwriters, and uh, musicians growing up? Okay. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to go like from now to then. Right this minute, Hardy, capital H, capital A, capital R, capital D, capital Y. This guy is like the most amazing country artist I have ever seen in my whole life. Because he's not really country, he he blends everything that he's heard before and turns it into his own thing. And he's the nicest guy. And he's got a beautiful girlfriend, and we're all friends, but I dearly love them very much. Okay, so then going back, George Jones, just anything that George Jones did, and actually this is funny, two weeks ago, I got hired to be in a TV commercial that was filmed on George Jones and Tammy Wynette's estate in wow. Nashville. It was like the most amazing thing. It was the <laughs> coolest place ever. Um, and that was quite fun. But so George Jones, uh, Hank Williams, Honky Tonk Blues. That song continues to show up in my life all these years later. So in the country market, I guess it's them. Um, but musically, I, I really have to tell you, it's one song. It's Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Mm -hmm. That song continues to change my life. Um, when I heard it in The Wizard of Oz, it helped me. <laughs> it helped me get over being scared to bejesus death by the flying monkeys. I'm telling you what, I'm only scared of one thing in my whole life still. And it's those freaking flying monkeys on the Wizard of Oz. But when I heard Over the Rainbow, it calmed me down and I'm okay. The way that I got into the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame, I played with the Band of Oz, a beach music band in the Southeastern United States. Very, very popular. They were called the Band of Oz. I asked them, why in the hell don't we play Over the Rainbow? They're like, that's crazy. Why would we ever want to do that? Finally, after asking about a hundred times, the, the band manager said, okay, you do an arrangement, do a demo, and maybe we'll record it. Well, I did. And he was like, okay, we will record this. It became their biggest selling single ever. Wow. It still gets, it still gets played all the time in the Southeastern <laughs> United States. And that got me into the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame. So if there is a song that changed my life and continues to, because when I sit at the piano and play it, it just, Mike, it blows me away, the simplicity of the, the chord changes in the melody, but the essence of the whole song that just hits you in the heart. It's music is an amazing thing to me. And my gift is that I get to connect people who write music with people who want to record music. Mm. That's how I get to be a rock star every day. Mm. 
that's rather interesting. That's why you're called the uh, connector, song plugger, and everything else. And, um, you know, of all the country stars that you have uh, seen over the years and everything else like that, who are some of the ones that you had predicted, like before they came famous, actually did become famous? Natalie Hemby. Natalie Hemby is a huge songwriter right now. She's also in a group called The High Women. I was able to, through Barbara Orvis and Roy's widow, I was able to sign Natalie to her first publishing deal. Nice. 30 years ago. And she has just blossomed into this fabulous songwriter. She wrote Pontoon for Little Big Town. She's written songs for Miranda Lambert. She's now an artist in her own right. And it's just, you know, again, it's, I get to be at the right place at the right time. And I look around and I see things I go, oh, well, this might work with this. And you connect them and every now and then it works out. So it's pretty fabulous. Mm -hmm. And very fabulous indeed, too. You also uh, co-authored the book, The Seven Stupid Mistakes People Make Trying to Get in the Music Business. And um, also we'll talk about your book, uh, Dapper, as well, and some of your projects. But first, to listen to The Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at soundcrabstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundcrab Studios is the answer. Soundcrab Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundcrabstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor, The Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon, paperback, and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has gotten great reviews and Eve Levin and George by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for it goes Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms in over 100 countries, including HamiltonRadio.net, Oldies FM, Diamonds Radio, and a few networks coming soon. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books, merchandise, and more. I'll support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, themikewagnershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the amazing war-winning music publisher and management consultant and member of the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame, Chris Keaton here on the Mike Wagner Show. And um, not only you've been in... Um, a music publisher and management consultant for uh, quite some time. And uh, you can tell us about, um, you know, what prompted you to get into the uh, management business and maybe just a little step-by-step. -step. You talked about, um, you, you know, your, your days of um, just, um, you know, connecting with people and just working your way up, working your way up and, um, you know, some of the trials and everything else. And um, the fact, I mean, what you're having is just a climb. It's just totally amazing. Well, thank you. I mean, it has been a climb. Um, not everything works out right this minute, but mm -hmm. everything does work out ultimately. I mean, in fact, it's funny, just 30 minutes ago, before we started the show, I reconnected with a gentleman who has a band who is breaking internationally right now. I haven't talked to him in 10 years. We reconnected and he's going to hire me to consult with them because he's just got some challenges that I may be able to help him with. It's you know, there's no finish line in, in our business. There's no end to your dream unless you kill it. Those are the things that I really believe. And I'm, I gotta tell you, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm grateful every day that I get to do what I love to do. I get to live a rock star lifestyle. And even though I don't have the pillows with, with like my name on it, I got these, Beautiful floral pillows. <laughs> oh, I, I, I see think your name. You might, in, I think you might want one. I see your name in invisible ink. You know, I just <laughs> threw some lemon juice at it. And uh, yeah, invisible ink. I just uh, put a little onion paper on it. And um, yeah, it's got your name on it. Yeah, I think we just came up with a great idea for you. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's all about being the connector. I show up 
I connect with you and good ideas show up. So thank you for that, Mike Wagner. <laughs> oh, it's amazing too. And you know something? If you if you know any females that uh, need a little uh, shopping bag or something, we got tote bags available. And of course, you can also create your own tote bag and just say, hey, you can uh, go around shopping with your show or whatever it is. And uh, they can stick their chihuahua, their or little dog or cat, or maybe, you know, stuff like, you know, thousands of dollars worth of clothes from Macy's or wherever. It's like, see, you know, see it all, see it all adds up here because I want my clients now to bring in a Mike Wagner show bag and fill it up with Macy stuff. Now, don't pass the register as you leave there because, you know, we got detectives that will chase you out in the parking lot. But, you know, anyway, no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> you, you know, something, you know, speaking of that, uh, you also remember the uh, Macy style crew. And I just realized yeah. that I was just going to talk about it. And it's like it just happened to pop up. It's like <laughs> Macy style well, crew. And uh, tell us about that. <laughs> and, uh, so so it, the, the style crew is a really fun organization to be a part of. We the, the Macy's idea now is own your style. Style is not fashion. Style is who you are. Style is what you're comfortable in wearing. We want to help people find their own style and move forward. So with the style crew, what we do is like, you know, I'm like, I like to wear turtleneck sweaters. I like to wear a lot of jewelry. I like to wear different kinds of things. I offer these as ideas to my clients or potential Macy's customers. And we just try to engage them. And even if they come back to me and go, well, you know, that's not really for me. I go, well, okay, well, please tell me what is for you. And I help them to define their style. It's all about owning your style. And, and again, th the idea behind Macy's and also behind what I do as the connector is connect, inspire, and deliver. I connect you with somebody who can help you move, move your career forward. I inspire you to continue to connect with those people. and then we deliver the goods or your goals that you're trying to reach. Ta-da! It's really, it's simple as one, two, three. I mean, it is. Hmm. That does sound really simple, too. And do you think Macy's will do uh, hoodies as well, too? It's like, do you think they'll take in that? You know, there's a whole new thing coming, and we should talk. I can't talk about it right this second, but we should talk. That's fine. Okay, well, we can do it off camera, off the air, or anything like that. I mean, that's perfectly fine. And for those who are insisting on it, they'll have to give us your credit card number. We can just charge up whatever we want. So give us your number, and we'll just rack up a huge bill, and you pay, pay for it. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. Yeah. Oh, let the money come in. That's right. And of course, um, you're also an amazing author as well, too. You co-authored the seven stupid mistakes people make trying to get into the music business. And um, tell us more about that and uh, what inspired you and um, how'd you get the co-author of the book? You know, so the the co-author with me was a gentleman named Benny Carrion, who I always refer to as Benny Carry On My Wayward Son, which refers back to the old Kansas song. Oh, that's but, my favorite. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, but he's a brilliant marketer and we got together and we wrote a book about because he, he came to me and said, what do you see that the stupidest things that you see people do? And we talked about them. And a lot of it is just being ignorant, being not nice, and not paying attention, which actually ultimately is what the book Dapper is all about, too. It's all about being a gentleman or being nice or being civil. It's about... You know, it's kind of like this. So in the music business, if if I go to dinner anywhere in Music City, if I happen to mention that I'm a publisher and I've got connections in the business, the server, if they don't know what they're doing, is going to pop up to me when they give me the check and give me a CD. Well, guess what? Nine times out of 10, I'm not going to listen to it. Now, if they had come to me and said, hey, could I give you a CD? I would have said, yes. Why don't you send it, and here's my address, P.O. Box, blah, 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 blah. Send it to me. I'll be happy to listen to it. It's all about being civil and being nice and not being a butthole. Pardon me, but, I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, 
Some people just cannot get out of their own way. We would all be better off if we could just get out of our own way and remember that everybody else is just as fabulous as we are. Perhaps they maybe are more fabulous than we are. Let's give them a chance. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That probably makes a lot of sense. And I hate to say this, that um, back in the day, and I think you're probably do a little spin about maybe 30, 40, 50 years ago that, um, you know, men wore suits and uh, the women wore dresses. You can go even further back then, even it's like you're going to the store or going to your son's uh, Little League game. You know, back in the day, it's like, you know, men wore nice shirts, nice suits and everything else. And the um, ladies wore nice dresses and uh, everything else. And all of a sudden, it's like you're, you're seeing like the men and women out there. It's like they just got out of bed or, you know, just got hung over um from from having having too many Heinekens or Jack Daniels or whatever too, it seems like it's it's kind of lost along the way. And um, I was talking to a guy um, that that runs his own fashion line, and there is a trend out there. I don't know if you agree with me that um, there, there's talk they're going to be bringing back the uh, the three piece suit back. It's like the suit, the vest, and the nice pants as well. And they're making a trend. It's like you just wear it to work. You wear it, come home, or it's like, you know, at night, you just uh, wear a two-piece suit, or even if you're going to the store, church, or a ball game, movie, whatever it is, you know, just throw on, throw on a suit and uh, let the ladies wear nice dresses. Well, I'm very pleased to hear that, because that is the door that we have been knocking on, pounding on for the last little bit. I mean, I learned it from... Bill O'Coin. Bill O'Coin was a partner of mine, a business partner of mine in the late 90s. In the 70s, Bill O'Coin managed to kiss. Yes, kiss. And he took them from ground zero to where they were the biggest fan on the planet. He taught me. In fact, he picked me up to go to a meeting at a record company in Nashville. And I had on a pair of jeans and a T-shirt and he was in a full suit pocket square, tie, everything. He looked at me and said, uh, do you need to change before we go to the meeting? And I'm like, well, no, I think I'm ready to go. He said, no, you're not ready to go. He said, please go home, put on a suit, come back and we'll go take the meeting. So I did. We took the meeting. I'm perplexed through the whole meeting because everything was going his way. At the end of the meeting, he said, here's the deal. If you go into a record company or a meeting dressed better than the person that you're meeting with, they're going to think you know something they don't know. Hmm. Boom. And from that day forward, it has worked for me. And even, even, even like a week ago, I was in Chicago on a Saturday at my daughter's graduation, and I was in a full suit and a tie. Everywhere I went, people were like, dude, you're the most important guy in the room. Oh, my gosh, Mr. Keaton, your table is ready. Come on. It was like, and all it is is just showing up, looking like you know what you're doing. Mm. So thank you, Mike, for sharing with me that other people are talking about that because that's like the most amazing. That's wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you as well, too, that uh, when, I, when I did that interview and talked to this gentleman and I said to myself, I am going to go out and get a three piece suit and I'm going to get my, get my wife to go in a nice dress and go and go to a ball game or even go to like a movie theater or, you know, you know, back in the day, just watch our, our kids play soccer or anything like that, you know, three piece or just dressed down in a blazer and all that. And, um, that was done like, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And, um, you know, I love to see that come back and, uh, really bring civility. So, you know, that's part of uh, we talked about as well, too. Maybe just um, one or two more of the uh, seven stupid mistakes uh, people are trying to make and uh, maybe just share one as well, too, before we get into your uh, other book as well. Yeah, well, the, you know, the, the biggest stupid mistake is people, when you offer for them to send you some music, they send me 20 songs. Well, subliminally, if I look at a CD or an email with 20 songs on it, First thing I think is, I don't have time for this right now. Mm -hmm. And that means that I put it on the back burner. And you know what the back burner means. The back burner, bingo, the back burner is one step away from the trash can. However, if somebody sends me two songs or three songs, I go, oh, I can listen to that right now. And boom, they're in the door. 
that is a stupid mistake that people make. Another one is people come to me and go, oh, I'm a great singer. I can sing anything you want me to sing. I okay, get that a lot. Yes. Yeah. And the message there is you don't know what you are doing or you don't know who you want to be. In the music business, when you're trying to break in, you have to be very narrow cast. You have to say, my audience is 25 years old, female, and they will enjoy what I sing. Boom. Don't say anything else. And if you can hit them there, then you can expand out from there. But if you come in and say, oh, I can do anything, you just tell me what to do. It's the kiss of death. Mm, I, I get that a lot as well, too, with some people saying, you know, I can talk about everything and anything I said, you know, just be really specific. You're right. It's just like you're going to like the Mall of America and um, you think you can get what you want and everything else. But in reality, you really don't know what you're doing. You need to be completely lost. But if you're at the Mall of America, let's say, let's say I just want to go to Macy's and get a pair of jeans. You exactly know what you're doing. And if you see something else like, say, you know, Pennies is offering this or say with, um you know, Tarjay's, they call it, you know, they offer that. So you can probably just, you know, branch off here and there and everything else. So I think that worked better instead of saying, "Uh oh, where do I go now? You think what you're doing. So you're right on that one. Well, and, 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 and thank you for that, but you're right as well. And the, the fact is, you know, in, in the malls, Mall of America or Green Hills Mall in Nashville or Cool Springs Mall or whatever, you have people who walk the mall. And that's the reason they're there because they're walking and they can walk inside and they get their exercise. That's a marvelous thing. But then you also have people come in and know what they're looking for. And the people who know what they're looking for in the music business and really in any other business, they're the people you want to connect with. The walkers, let them do what they do because they're, they're on their own mission. Hmm. That's a rather interesting point as well, too. And uh, we'll also talk about your podcast as well, too, Random Acts, and uh, a bit more about the uh, book Dapper with um, Chris Keaton. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, The Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson, The Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. We'll be back with war winning music publisher, management consultant, and member of the North Co- North Carolina Hall of Fame and author Chris Keaton after this time out. We're back with the amazing, multi-talented, war-winning music publisher, management consultant, and author of Seven Stupid Mistakes People Make Trying to Get in the Music Business. Uh, Chris Keaton here on the Mike Wagner Show. Learned a lot from you, Chris, about the ins and outs and everything else and the intricacies. And you also showed me Dapper as well, too, and um, which is like an offshoot of the Seven Stupid Mistakes. And um, you know, tell us more about the book and what inspired you to write it. And perhaps you can show it again, too. In fact, I, I'm trying to get a a vision of it too. In fact, what you're, what you got right there, I'm going to go out and get it. So. <laughs> oh, the music doesn't come with it, but that's just me saying it. Oh. <laughs> Love okay. It, so yes. thank you. So the whole idea about the book is civility. I mean, I'll read you a couple of things. Like one of it is this, a gentleman knows that the first to forgive is the strongest. And the first to forget is the happiest. I mean, it it's just common knowledge. I mean, it's things like a gentleman knows that life is not a dress rehearsal. You know, and so the, the gentleman who took the photographs for this with me, Brian Keith, did an amazing job. And it's just, it's it's not rocket science, but it's stopping for a second. And it's really, in a weird sort of way, and thank you for this because it's just now coming to me. It's about the golden rule. It's about treating people the way that you want to be treated. That's all it is. And so I, I, I wrote The Seven Stupid Mistakes. I was a co-author in The Change, a series of books, and then Dapper. And I'm working on a new book now on confidence because to me, it all kind of goes hand in hand. Confidence to me is this. When you walk into a room, it's not saying, here I am. Confidence is walking into a room and going, oh, there you are. I'm so happy to see you. You know, it's, I don't know. I'm just trying to make, I'm just trying to leave the planet when I go, but I'm not ready to go yet. 
But when I do go, I want to leave it in a little bit better place than when I showed up. It's a formidable mission, but I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And you certainly are as well, too. And don't go yet, because I love to have you back as well. Don't leave this planet yet. Please don't. <laughs> Thank okay. You. <laughs> Thank you. And, and if you have to, take some chocolate cake with you, with the icing, too, when you go upstairs. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so hungry already. You also have a podcast called Random Acts. And uh, tell us more about that. Okay. So that's pretty simple. About two years ago, I was on the phone with a friend of mine who is a record producer. And he said, so what are you doing now? He said, you know, I see you're working with Macy's and you're still in the music business. I said, no, I'm in the Chris Keaton business now. And he said, oh, I like that. He said, well, you know, maybe you ought to be on my podcast. And, and, and I was like, okay, great. That's a great idea. I said, you ought to have your own podcast. And I said, well, okay. And then he said, well, what would you call it? And I said, I would call it Random Acts. And he said, oh, you mean like random acts of kindness? And I said, well, yeah, that, but also random acts. That means I can talk about anything I want to because it's totally random. I can go from one place to the next, to the next, to the next. And if you listen to it, there are, there are 21 episodes already out there. And everyone is totally different. And the majority of it is, Mike, to be perfectly honest, it's stories that I have actually had happen to me or stories that I've heard about. And I just share them with people. And it's, to me, wildly entertaining. I will wait for you to get back to me and explain to me if you think it's wildly entertaining or just a bunch of crap. Either way, it's fine. Because <laughs> it's random acts, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. And, and I get the sense that it is not a bunch of crap. I mean, it is, it is amazing from the sounds of it. Yes, and uh, definitely check that out. Uh, random pop. Random Max and where can we find Random Max and what can we find all your books at, Chris? Okay, so Random Max is available at Spotify, Apple, uh, Spreaker, all of the podcast locations. The book Dapper is available at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and at BookBaby.com. Uh, or you can order it from me, and I'll even sign it and send it to you. You can send me an email at Chris at ChrisKeaton.com, which is this C H R I S, the one true spelling at C H R I S K E A T O N dot com. Again, the one true spelling. Send me an email. I'll bill you for it and I will send you one and I will sign it. Sounds great. Okay. And that's a great idea as well, too. We're here with the amazing, war winning music publisher, management consultant, and author Chris Keaton here on the Mike Wagner Show. Just a few more minutes, Chris, and I'd love to have you back as well, too. What else can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond, Chris? Dude, I don't even know, but I can tell you this. It's going to be freaking fabulous because every day I'm in this creative zone and it's just, I do videos every day for Instagram and I'm just having a blast with that. And I do my newsletter three days a week and I'm having a blast with that. And every time I talk to a customer at Macy's and essentially most of that is online right this minute, I'm having a blast. And you know this. I can tell this by looking at you and the connection that we've had over the last 42 minutes. Is that has it been that you, long? Really? I thought well, it was I don't really know. 42 I was, years. <laughs> <laughs> I was just guessing. But the, I'm kidding. The fact, the fact is, we are making a connection. And the whole, my whole rebranding of calling myself the connector really comes from Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell in the book, The Tipping Point, talked about connectors, and they are people in a community who know a bunch of people who are in the habit of introducing people to get together. That is who I am. That is what I do. I help people. I do that in my work with Macy's. I do that in my work with The Connector. I do that with Dapper. I do that with being on here with you, because again, the gift that you and I are sharing right this second is somewhere, some place, someone is listening to this going, I wanna meet that Mike Wagner guy, or I wanna meet that Chris Keaton guy. And either way, it's a gift for both of us. And isn't it just the most marvelous thing of all? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And of course, uh, I had a guest on uh, a while back too that um, they're interested in the NFT as well too. And 
the, the guy heard the show about NFT and he bought into it right away. And this is from a small island too. It's just like, how do you like that? I went, really? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, we, in the, in the short time that we're on this planet, we get to share things with people and we get to plant seeds and we really never know where they're going to grow. And I, I, I sort of feel like it, it's like this. So, so when I, when I first started doing the badass of the week newsletter and I would shout out about somebody, if they didn't get back to me, like in three or four days, I was like, oh, God, this is awful. I, I said all these nice things about them and they didn't get back to me. And then it hit me. You know what? It doesn't matter. What we are put here to do is to put that good stuff out there. If it comes back, great, but it will come back in ways that we don't expect. Mm -hmm. Every day is a holiday, every meal is a banquet. And if we look at it like that, we're golden. That is a great point. I like that. And I'm a member of that very as well. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? My mother and father because my father was a doctor he could have very easily said you need to do this you need to do what i do he encouraged me to be the best chris that i could be my mother who is still alive um was a church organist for 50 years plays piano like nobody's business and is the most creative person still to this day that i know so they continue to inspire me every day and on the other side of it my wife allows me to do what i want to do and be myself and now i have a daughter or the two of us have a daughter who is blossoming into chris keaton 2.0 i mean it's like, the most, <laughs> it's like look out look out i mean i'm just telling you maddie the scallion is coming to get you so there it is wow i like that Chris 2.0. I like that. I have to name my kids 2.0 too. And uh, you know, just like my daughter, Sarah could call her a uh, Mike 2.0 or my wife, Serena 2.0, an amazing musician. That's another time. What's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Don't take any shit from anybody. That's it. I mean, and, and what I mean by that, and I don't mean to be vulgar about it, but what I'm saying is don't let anybody talk you out of what you want to do. You have to give it a shot. And if it doesn't work out, at least you gave it a shot. The, the worst, <coughs> excuse me, the worst hell I can imagine before we actually, if we have to, you know, get there mm -hmm. is, is sitting in a rocking chair at 80 years old going, you know, sure wish I'd have tried that one more time. I mean, forget that. Try it now. Go for it now. If it doesn't work out, it will lead you to somewhere where you're supposed to be. That's the best advice I ever got, and that's the best advice I can give anybody else. And that's the best indeed as well, too. I really like that, Chris. Once again, we're with uh, Chris Keaton, award-winning music publisher, management consultant, and author of The Seven Stupid Mistakes People Make Trying to Get in the Music Business and Dapper on the Mike Wagner Show. Chris, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Learned a lot. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people uh purchase your books, check out your podcast and uh, check out Macy's and uh, how do people contact you uh, for consulting and everything? The best way and the easiest way is Chris at ChrisKeaton.com. The book is available at BookBabyAmazon.com. You can find me at Macy's.com. There are videos of me on, the, on that site too. It's pretty funny, believe it or not, but reach out to me. I will take anybody's email. I will respond to it at any time because I'm happy to get the connections. Sounds great. We will do so. Once again, Chris, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. We wish you all best. And you definitely have a great future ahead of you. Thank you, Mike. God bless you.